All around you are pipes that carry water and other liquids to and from where you are to where they need to go. Specifically, water and sewage pipes are unseen heroes that allow modern infrastructure to function easily. However, you might be surprised that the physics of pipes isn't as straightforward as you might think. In fact, people go to school to get entire engineering degrees related to how water flows through pipes, civil engineers, and there's actually some pretty interesting physics going on underneath the covers of pipes. So let's take a look and learn a little bit more about how fluid flows through these round liquid highways. Discussing the physics of pipes is really a discussion of fluid dynamics, which is the study of how fluids behave while in motion. Fluid dynamics isn't the least complicated thing in the world, so we'll stick to the basics for this video. First, we need to understand a few things about the states of fluids. Any given fluid can flow in a steady state, or the fluid can be turbulent. Steady flow implies that the fluid maintains constant velocity at any given point, whereas turbulent flow implies the fluid changes speed and direction all throughout the pipe. Steady flow is easy to represent, just straight lines for motion and velocity. Expressing turbulent flow is best done by handing a toddler a marker and telling them to scribble as fast as they can. This is how the experts do it. In reality though, turbulent flow is hard to model and it just means the properties of the flow are constantly changing. Fluids are also compressible or incompressible. Liquids are generally incompressible. A gallon or liter of water can't be compressed into anything smaller, whereas a gallon or liter of air could be compressed to much smaller volumes. Since we're focusing on water pipes in this video, we'll just assume that all of the fluids moving through them are incompressible. Fluids can also be viscous or non-viscous. Think of this like thickness. Viscous fluid flows slowly, and non-viscous fluid pours easily. Honey flowing through a pipe would look a lot different compared to water flowing through a pipe. That's the difference in viscosity. Fluid flow can also be rotational or irrotational. Irrotational means straight lines and rotational means swirling. Now that I've defined the terms, we're going to need to make some assumptions because, like I said, fluid dynamics is complicated. For learning the physics, we're going to assume irrotational, incompressible, steady streamline, non-viscous flow. If you ask why, it's because if we don't make those assumptions, the math gets squirrely and fast. So let's move on to the actual math. The first equation we'll need to learn is the continuity equation, or the equation of continuity. The equation states that for an incompressible fluid flowing through a tube or pipe of variable cross-section, the mass flow rate is the same everywhere in the tube. The mass flow rate is simply the rate at which a given weight of water flows through the tube. It's just the total mass of the fluid divided by the time interval. So expressing that statement in simpler terms, the way that a mass of water flows through a pipe is assumed to be constant regardless of cross-sectional area. The equation we get out of that is this. The density of the fluid, the Greek symbol rho, is generally constant in a fluid or a pipe. That can change if the pipe gets hot or cold in different places, but generally we're going to assume that density is constant. A is the cross-sectional area, which is dependent upon the size of the pipe, obviously, and then V is velocity. So, using that equation, you could determine how fast a fluid would flow through a pipe of a given size, or how large you need to make a pipe to get a fluid to flow at a given speed. But let's back up for a second. How do you even make a fluid flow through a pipe? Well, you're going to either need to use gravity, or you're going to need a pressure differential, typically created through pumps. Gravity just means tilting the pipe downward, so gravity acts on the fluid, causes it to be accelerated, and gets it moving through the pipe. This is how sewer systems work in most cases. If you want to learn a little bit more about how sewer system pipes and networks work, our video is linked right in the top right corner here. The second way is by creating a pressure differential. This is generally achieved through pumps. Utilizing pressure differentials, you can apply greater pressure to a fluid at one end of the pipe, and it will want to flow to the other lower pressure side. When it comes to pipes, fluids, and pressure, remember that the fluid wants to have equal pressure everywhere. When there's a differential and a path of flow, the fluid will go to the lower pressure under the conditions that we assumed. 
So how can we model this flow through a pipe? We can use something called Bernoulli's equation, which relates pressures, velocities, and height of fluid in a pipe. Bernoulli's equation is everywhere in fluid mechanics, and it's probably the most important equation in this line of physics. It comes into play in airplanes, sports, and of course, in plumbing pipes. So what is Bernoulli's equation? It states that the pressure, speed, and height of a fluid at two different points in steady flow, non-viscous, incompressible fluids are related like this. P is pressure, rho is density, V is velocity, Y, often represented as H, is height, and G is gravitational acceleration, which is a constant depending upon elevation or location. Generally, you can use about 9.81 meters per second squared for this. Utilizing this equation, you can essentially do some algebra and some calculus to solve for any one of these variables. This is incredibly helpful to engineers in calculating any number of things. But What's interesting about this equation? Well, let's consider a fluid flowing through a horizontal pipe. If the pipe is narrower at one spot, the continuity equation implies that the velocity of the fluid is greater at the narrow section. So is the pressure higher or lower in the narrow section where the velocity is higher? You might think that if the velocity is super high, then the pressure must also be super high too. After all, if you stick your hand at the end of a hose nozzle, you're going to feel a lot of force. However, this force you're feeling isn't coming from the pressure in this instance. It's coming from your hand taking the momentum out of the fluid because it's moving at such a high velocity. We can simplify Bernoulli's equation in a flat pipe, and since height doesn't change, it looks like this, a little bit easier to understand. Since the smaller pipe on the right has a larger velocity, the pressure on the right has to be lower to get the equation to balance. It's this difference in pressure that actually causes the fluid to flow faster. So that basically wraps up some of the most basic physics and equations surrounding how water or fluid flows through pipes and some ways to model it. But what we didn't focus on is the actual changes in water based on where it's at in the cross-sectional area of the pipe, among a variety of other factors. We didn't cover topics like head, head loss, pumps, flow rates, all of that kind of stuff, and it takes a little bit more understanding of the basics and is probably due for another video. As with most of engineering and physics, the coolest thing about learning it is that you understand how much math and incredibly complex things occur around you, even in simple things such as water pipes. And learning engineering and physics help you, helps you understand all of that complex math and physics, and it's actually simpler than you might think. Thanks for watching.